Hello, I'm Igor Spirinov, International Grandmaster and the Chess Coach. Welcome into the second part of the lesson The Secrets of Strong Players. Some time ago I've recorded the first part of this lesson and I received lots of positive feedback from students about that lesson, that's why I've decided to record a continuation. Before we begin, let me outline what kind of secrets are we talking about in this lesson. Nowadays, there is a wide variety of chess tutorials and any decent chess player knows all the classical chess rules. For example, you're probably aware of all the common rules like develop pieces in an opening, put a rook on an open file and standard tactical motifs like pin, fork, and discovered attack and any other common chess rules. Most of the chess players share this knowledge. Nevertheless, stronger players manage to gain victories, which means that they have some additional skills that they use in their games. In most of the cases they do not share these practical techniques even if they comment a game or write a book. And that's the point of this lesson here, I will reveal some of the practical techniques that strong players use in their games. Let's take a look at this example. As usual, I invite you to be active and to think by yourself. In that case, you will indeed improve and develop necessary skills. This is a game between Maiseenka and Lupulescu, if I pronounce his surname properly. It was played a few days ago in the current European Championship, and now you can test yourself in this position. Even though it's still a theoretical position, let's leave the theory aside for a moment and just try to think by ourselves. So what do you think? How would you play here as white? There can be quite a lot of logical moves. White can castle to continue his development or white can, let's say, push his A pawn to A4 and A5 to get rid of his weak pawn and disturb his opponent. White can try to break through in the center with something like D5 or maybe white needs to neutralize that active knight on the e4 and take it straight away or maybe play knight d2. Also white can try to exploit the black's advanced pawns on the king side and play h4. As you can see there are a lot of different options. And the same thing will happen in almost any position. Although we know the common chess rules, but in most of the cases different factors work in single position, while you still need to find the best move somehow. Here is the rule that will simplify your situation a lot. Keep focus on attack. In order to find proper attacking moves, usually you need to focus your attention on opponent's half of the board and think how you can make attacking moves there. Let's try to apply this idea for this position. Which moves white can play on black's half of the board? Not much really. White can only play pawn to c5 or pawn to d5. And both of these options are fine. For example, if white plays d5, he is trying to break through the center and white is threatening to take the knight or to jump with his knight to d4, attacking lots of squares in black's position and all in all it may give white a strong initiative. Alternatively, white can play c5, which is also an interesting idea and it was played in this game. White also is trying to open a position to exploit his two bishops and black's weakened position. If black takes with a c pawn, it will give the new open line for the white's rook and white can play rook b1, maybe queen b3 in the future and it gives white additional attacking possibilities. If black takes with the d pawn, this will give a new e5 square for white's pieces, for white's bishop or for his knight and then the knight can jump to, to g6 potentially in some variations or white can play f3 uh, pushing away black's knight. This diagonal will also be weak and white can play bishop c4 or queen b3 in the future or bishop b5 given check 
As you can see, White now has a lot of different attacking possibilities. Now let's make a few moves back. The main thing that we should notice here is that if you focus on opponent's half of the board and you keep focus on attacking moves, you will be able to find the right moves very easily. Okay, let's go back to the game. Here black played knight to d7. Now white took on to d6. That was the point of his previous move. White wants to open a position and create more weaknesses in black's pawn structure. Okay, in this position if we try to play attacking moves on the black side, there are no options really. Well, white can move his bishop to b5, but there is no attack there. That's why white simply castled, and black replied h5. Now that's a new position when we need to think and to make the right decision. What do you think about it? What should be the white's move here? Again, white has a few options. Obviously, black is going to trap the bishop after h4, and white needs to do something about it. Uh, white can take, bishop takes e4, because it will eliminate a defender of the d6 pawn. So this is one option. Another option is that white can give an escape path for his bishop while playing h3 or maybe h4. Maybe white can play knight d2 as well, with the same purpose of uh, getting rid of that knight on e4 and put attack on the d6 pawn. Therefore we have a couple of options. Which one is the best? Again, we need to recollect the main rule. You should keep focus on attack. We, we don't want just to make a defensive move like h3. We want to make an attacking move. And with that in mind, white played h4. Because it's not only a defense for his bishop, but also white is going to attack black's pawns there on the king side. Once again, you can see that this simple idea of always keeping a focus on just one factor, on the attack, can simplify your game a lot. Okay, now I'd like to tell you one more thing that is also very important to keep in mind and to follow while playing. A little time ago we stated that attacking moves are the best. It means that you should try to play attacking moves by yourself and at the same time you need to prevent potential opponent's attack, because this can cause real danger for you. That's why before playing moves on the board, before playing the moves that you're going to play, you need to check potential attacking replies of your opponent. How do you do it? Very simple, you use exactly the same method of thinking. Let's try to think about this position from the side of black. How would black try to attack if he wants? He will use the same method. He will focus his attention on white's half of the board and will think which attacking moves he can play there. With that in mind, black has a few options. He can take an h4, maybe play g4. The knight can take on g3. Maybe black can push f4 as well, but it's probably bad because it will leave the e4 knight hanging and white can just take it. Uh, thus, in total, we have three options. g4, g takes h4, and knight takes g3. These are the moves that black player will calculate and will try to play, if one of them works. Now, we're playing white, so you just need to think about these options before playing h4. So let's flip the board back to the white side. If you're playing white, then before playing the move h4, you need to calculate those potential attacking replies of your opponent. In most of the cases, you can make such calculations very quickly. For example, obviously g takes h4 causes no danger for white, you just recapture and it only helps you. Similarly, if black plays g4, obviously white can just remove his knight and the position on the king side is closed, there is nothing black can do, and it's easy to detect that there is no danger here for white. We also need to calculate knight takes g3 move, pawn takes. Here if black pushes g4, we have seen that situation already, it closes the position, there is no danger for white. Instead black will probably try to open a position, so he can take an h4. 
and in addition to that he can also take on a 3 that's now the move on white's half of the board that black can do in order to eliminate a defender of that h4 pawn and after that he can win a pawn by g takes h4 so this is a line that you must calculate before playing h4 here you need to evaluate this position and think whether it is dangerous for you or not in this particular example although black won a pawn but he has no active pieces at all he's trying to attack with just with his pawns while all his pieces are still on their initial positions so I don't think it, it may be bad for white actually it should be bad for black white just needs to open up a position playing like e4 maybe white may even consider a sacrifice like bishop takes f5 the move in the style of Mikhail Tal something like that and even such sacrifice may be dangerous for black because then white is going to make checks queen g6 queen e4 and attack black's weakened king of course it requires additional calculation but in any case we can detect that this line should not be dangerous for white after you made such calculations you can come to a conclusion that you may play h4 but you see that it's important to make these calculations before playing this move because otherwise you can overlook opponent's powerful attack and appear in huge troubles and that's what happens very often with chess players now you know how to prevent it okay let's move forward in the game black played queen to e7 this time white needs to think again to detect the best move one of the obvious options is to take on g5 and that is a possible option indeed in the game he chosen another option he took on to e4 and it's important to state here that this is not a defensive move that's an attacking move white eliminates the defender of the g5 pawn and on the next move he is going to capture it that's why again you can see that white keeps focus on attack that's the reason for the move bishop to e4 and that's why black has to recapture with a bishop otherwise he will lose a pawn white played queen to e2 well white has to do that because he needs to protect the knight otherwise black will take the knight and will take an h4 that's why queen e2 is forced black replied g takes h4 and now that's a question for you white has two moves knight takes h4 or bishop takes which move is better? The answer is easy, the attacking move is better. And bishop takes h4 is a direct attack. That's why this should be the move that you consider first. Once again, before playing this move on the board, you need to check potential attacking replies of your opponent. What is a potential attacking reply of black? We need to focus your attention on the white side of the board and think which moves, which attacking moves black can play there. So black can play bishop takes f3. And this is the line that you need to calculate. So bishop takes h4, what if bishop takes f3 here? In this position you can recapture by the queen. And all of a sudden black's a rook is in danger. There is no way for black to protect it. And thus white is winning and black may not play the move bishop f3. In the game he played knight to f6. Okay, that's now the position when you need to think. How would you play here as white? Focus your attention on the black side of the board and think which attacking moves you can play there. With that in mind you will find a few options. White can play queen to b5 check or knight to g5. Well, white can take, bishop takes f6, but it doesn't do much, it's just an exchange. You can see that although the position is complex, unbalanced, you can find the right moves very easily if you keep the right focus. After queen b5 check, black probably just can reply queen to d7, covering his king, so that's not a big problem for black. Well, knight g5 is more aggressive, we're attacking the bishop, and white is potentially putting pressure on the e6 pawn and this move looks pretty good now of course you may say that the bishop onto e4 is already protected 
that's true, but still in this position the e4 bishop is very powerful. It controls the whole board, it looks at the white's king, and therefore we may say that white is threatening to take the bishop, because it will eliminate black's most powerful piece. For example, if I play any move for black, just anyone to see the white's idea, white will take the bishop, f takes, and now let's say f3, to open up the position and black's situation is very difficult, probably he's just losing, you see he has no active pieces on the board and he experiences troubles with his knight and with numerous weaknesses. In the actual game, after knight g5, black retreated with bishop to c6. He's covering the b5 square as well, trying to prevent potential queen b5 check. Okay, what should white think about here? What do you think? There are no immediate attacking moves on black side of the board, therefore white should prepare them. The moves that white may consider here I think is maybe e4, because white can play this move using a pin, or maybe c4, and on the next move white will be ready to break through in the center. In the game he chosen the move c4, now white is ready to destroy the black's position with d5 at some point, maybe even knight takes e6 first and then d5 using a fork. As you can see, even here, white still keep his focus on black's position and on the ways to make attacking moves there. Another thing that is important to mention is that here, before playing c4 on the board, you need to check potential aggressive replies of your opponent. For this reason, you need to focus your attention on your half of the board on white side and think which moves black can play there. So let's think about that. What if white plays c4? Which attacking moves black can play? On the white side black can try maybe knight g4 or knight e4. Knight g4 is, no, is not dangerous because there is no threat. If black goes knight e4, well of course there are many things white can do, but at the very least white can play f4 protecting the knight and it means that this position is safe for white and you may play c4. So that's how you should think in a real game, before playing moves. If you follow this way, you will prevent blunders, you will avoid them completely, and you will prevent any unpleasant surprise from the side of your opponent. So white played c4, and in the game black indeed replied knight to e4. Here, as we discussed, at the very least white can play f4, supporting his knight, but of course, we would prefer to make more aggressive moves, to make attacking moves. And that's why white took the knight. This is a, an attack on black's queen. Black took the bishop. Now white took the pawn. And king to e7. Okay, that's now the task for you. How should white play here? What do you think? Obviously, black is attacking white's knight on d6. White can retreat with knight to b5 or to play c5, but it's not what we want, because we want to keep our focus on attack. So the question that you need to ask yourself is how can you attack black? How can you play a move on black's side of the board with some kind of attack? White answered this question to himself and played d5. And this is indeed the best idea. White counterattacks black's bishop, and of course black cannot take, because it will allow a very powerful folk. In the game black played rook to g8. What should white play now? What do you think? Here it's obvious that black is concentrating forces against white's king, and white needs to be careful. That's why here, as usual, before playing a move, you need to check which attacking replies black can play. For example, if white will be callous and capture black's bishop, black will play rook takes g2, which is the only attacking move actually, and then rook to g8 check, and on the next move, white will be mated. It's over. Let's go back. 
the game white played f4 covering the g2 square black answered bishop to a8 what should white do now? well ideally white still wants to play attacking moves on black's half of the board with that in mind we may consider something like c5 or maybe d takes c6 or maybe even e4 attacking black's possession however these options do not look very good because the knight is hanging onto d6 and we shouldn't forget about that for example if white takes onto e6 uh, creating knight takes f5 threat black can prevent it very easily by simply capturing the knight and there is nothing white can do white can make one check rook d1 but black will take king take c6 and it's over uh, the move like c5 would be very good in some other position but here probably it's not because black can play bishop takes d5 bringing his bishop back to life and that's why in this position white does not have good attacking options and he has to retreat he played knight to b5 black answered rook g3 what do you think now what should white do at first sight it may seem like black has no big threats because even if he plays rook g8 attacking your pawn you can play rook f2 and you're covered and that's why it's quite likely that some players would play something like uh, knight to d4 here, attacking black's position. At the same time, as we know, before playing moves on the board, you need to check aggressive replies of your opponent. So let's make this check. If you play knight to d4, now we need to focus your attention on the white half of the board and think which moves black can play here and which threats black can create here. If you follow this way of thinking, you will find the powerful way for black very easily. Black can go rook g8, taking white's g2 pawn, and after white replies with rook f2, black has another attacking move rook to h3, and black is winning. It will look like this. And there is no good defense against rook to h1. After revealing black's tactical threat, white played rook to a3, and now black's attack is over. He played e takes d5. What do you think now? As usual, we need to think about attacking moves. There are no, not so many that white can play. C takes d5 is a move onto black's half of the board, but here black will recapture and it only helps black to activate his bishop. As for other possible attacking options, white can go knight to d4, threatening knight takes f5 fog. It's one good option. In the game he played queen to b2, which is another possible idea. White has now a lot of diagonals for his queen to penetrate into black's position and attack black's king and white won the game pretty soon in a few moves just because black's exposed king has no defense and the black's position is destroyed we will not look this game until the end if you want you can find the link for the pgn file in the description of this video lesson uh, right now it's important just to make the general conclusion about the proper way of finding right moves when you play a chess game. The general rule is quite simple yet very effective. You should keep focus on attacking moves. Both on your own attacking moves and on the attacking moves of your opponent. When it is your turn, you focus on your attacking moves and you think about the opponent's half of the board and how you can play the attacking moves there. In most of the cases you have only a few such options and therefore you'll be able to find the right move very easily. There will be no need for you to check 10 different moves candidates. You will just select between a few possible options. Very often 
each of these options is good. So that's how you think when you need to find correct move for you. But before playing this move on the board, you need to check attacking moves of your opponent. Here you use exactly the same way of thinking, just this time you think from the side of your opponent. And that's why you focus attention on your half of the board. And you ask yourself which attacking moves your opponent can play there. Similarly, in most of the positions there will be only one, two possible attacking moves. You will check them quickly and this will make sure that your position is safe and the move that you are going to play is correct. You will avoid blunders, avoid any unpleasant surprises from the side of your opponent and you will make sure that your results are stable and you prevent annoying losses when you just overlooked a powerful shot of your opponent. If you keep only this one rule in mind while playing, you can improve your results quite a lot. Well, of course I'm a little bit simplifying the situation because we cannot narrow down the art of playing chess to just one rule. And, you know, of course I cannot cover everything within just one short lesson. If you want to know all of the important things that you need to keep in mind while playing, you can study my course, The Grandmaster's Position Understanding, where I describe the whole situation. But nevertheless, you shouldn't be deceived by simplicity of this rule, it is very powerful. And if you keep this in mind while observing the games of top Grandmasters, you will be able to understand the reasons of moves that they play. And if you play Blitz games, this idea will help you a lot, because in Blitz you need to play quickly, you don't have time to think about lots of things, and here if you focus your attention on just this one rule, you'll be able to play correct moves in most of the times. So that's what I wish to you. As usual, you're welcome to write your impressions and your results in comments below the video. Thanks for your attention, I wish you all the best, and talk to you in the next lessons.